Our big story tonight is the Portland Police Bureau and how our leaders are responding to pressure from protesters who want reform or in some cases the defunding of our police. Now we told you that last week Oregon's legislature passed a handful of police reform bills on top of banning chokeholds, requiring officers to intervene when they see bad behavior and limiting police arbitrators. It also banned the use of CS gas unless lives are at stake. And last night, the Bureau got its first big test since the governor signed those bills yesterday. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news here at 11. Police have declared a riot during a protest in North Portland. Police are asking protesters to leave the area. They are using CS gas, a form of tear gas. OK, so we made it. Uh... I don't know, less than a day without using CS gas. So unfortunately, we're going to have to set our days without CS gas ticker back to zero. Now, look, there are no surprise that these protesters targeted the Portland Police Association headquarters last night, and that's because last night the union's contract with the city of Portland expired. And I want to take a second and break down the really the unbelievable timing of all of this. Now, before coronavirus took over our lives, the city was all set to vote on a new union contract and a new budget. But once the virus started to spread, lawmakers kind of pivoted and put those issues on the back burner. And before they could even think of revisiting them, we saw another crisis, the killing of George Floyd and protests against police racism and violence. When suddenly these budget and contract votes that were put aside without much concern took on a whole new sense of urgency and certainly got a lot more attention from the community. So today, instead of renegotiating an entirely new contract with the Portland Police Association, you could say they punted, you, you know, after a, at least a few technical difficulties. Any further discussion? Carla, please call the roll. It looks like we may have lost the other two. What? You're kidding me. It looks like we don't have Commissioner Hardesty. Hang on. All right, let's let's give her a second to get back. I don't know what's going on with the. Uh, am I still frozen? Zoom, man, gets you every time. It comes for us all. Long story short, though, the city today voted to re up the old police union contract for another year. So not much has really changed on that front. Now, Commissioner Joanne Hardesty continues to be very critical of the police bureau and the union, but she explained why she was OK with this extension. This extension does not mean everybody stops work for a year and then comes back uh, a year later and starts over again. What it means is we will have the time to do it right and to do it thoughtfully. Um, otherwise, uh, we would have ended up with the exact contract that we already had, and that was not an option either. She went on to explain the process a bit more on Twitter and the timing, basically saying if they didn't come to a deal by this upcoming Monday, the process would have gone into mediation and that wouldn't have been public anymore. So Hardesty felt it was better to extend the current contract instead of taking the negotiations behind closed doors. So really, that's just a long way of saying that's why the action last night was all the way up in North Portland instead of in front of the Justice Center or Revolution Hall, where it has been on most nights, which brings us back to that police response that we referenced and the tear gas. Now, police quickly lined up in riot gear last night. They declared a riot and then they fired tear gas at people. And remember, this isn't downtown Portland. I mean, this is a quiet neighborhood. Downtown has seen this sort of thing a lot over the past few weeks, but not here. And as long as police are banned from using tear gas, uh, except when lives are in danger, the question will be how police determine when lives are in danger. Portland Police Chief Chuck Lavelle gave us an idea of why they made the determination last night. Some have said we're only protecting an empty building and the force used was excessive. My response to that is we would have seen one building lit on fire in a neighborhood where a commercial building fire could have led to residences being burned with families inside. But for activist groups like Don't Shoot Portland, for them that's just not a good enough reason. And now they are pushing for a judge to sanction the city for its actions last night. More protests are expected tonight. And there will certainly be more in the future. So we're going to see how long we can go, I guess, without the smell of CS gas in the air. Maybe this time we can go more than a day. Maybe not.